Thank you, Dr. Qureshi, for such a wonderful um, you know, theme setting. And I'm also eager to listen to Mr. Deva Sahayam because I'm told that there will be some things which I'm going to not talk about or maybe I will talk about, but he will actually in his presentation say things slightly differently. Uh, I have given a slot for 15 minutes and uh, EVMs which were introduced uh, in 1978 have gone through 40 years of existence. Summarizing 40 years of existence, 40 years of blows on the EVMs and 40 years of defense of the EVM is not a small deal but I will try to do my best if I can do in 15 minutes. Um, I think uh, the credit of introduction of idea of EVM or idea of using electronics in elections, especially in Indian elections, goes to Sri S.L. Siddhar, who was the CEC at that time. This was in 1978 and several committees came and all that. And all of you would probably know, you, many of you have been in the government, many of you have seen the rate at which the government moves from 1978 to the time that we have come till now. There are there have been lots of ups and downs and delays and you know progresses. So I will actually talk about a little bit of that. Um, 1978. When this idea was first mooted, a lot of proposals were invited and this idea, in fact, originally it came when um, a committee was formed. K.S. Rao from ECIL at that time said that time has come for electronics to be used, EVMs can be used in Indian election provided certain enabling factors are introduced in the law and right after that a lot of people started coming and say these are our proposals first proposal that came was from one mr dv lele in 1980 subsequently i think there have been some about 10 or 15 proposals but i will talk about four different names in that order dv lele sujit bose and Hanifa M. Vijay Prasad. These are the four uh, early proposers of what they can produce as an EVM. What we actually see EVM today has its roots in what was introduced by ECIL. Mr. T. N. Swami showed this EVM first time in 1982. To, I mean, of course, there have been several iterations that have gone beyond that, but 1982, he showed this EVM first time to CEC, to uh, Indira Gandhi, at that time Prime Minister, and I think generally the idea was light, but then there were inertia, there were apprehensions, there were all kinds of things, whether we could use it or not. Transparency in the elections was a major thing. In fact, we have heard recently, and it actually revives my memories of 70s and 80s, where booth capturing, ballot stuffing, I mean, all these things were rampant. By the time the police comes, you know, the entire party which actually did this will move on to the next polling booth, do the same thing. Elections after elections, results could be you know, tuned in some way. I mean, I don't want to use a negative word, but they could be tuned in certain ways to affect the outcome. And no matter what you do, you know, we did not have crowdsource WhatsApp kind of, you know, uh, filmmaking and uh, making it available over social media. Whatever was available in terms of evidences and witnesses and all that, on that basis, re-elections were ordered and all those kind of things happened. But I think in this room, I can probably say everybody would have that almost as clear as a 
it is written on the paper today. Recently, I also was reading an article when these memories were revived, when I looked at what happened in the local body elections of West Bengal recently, where, you know, ballot boxes were taken away, snatched away, boats were stuffed in, ballot boxes were put into water, they were retrieved, and all that kind of things, you know, a large scale violence that happened, people were stopped going to the polling booths, and all that kind of things. So it kind of brings a very, very interesting, uh, you know, memory of what happened. It's just a refresher for us. Why? Because EVM single-handedly stopped all such malpractices the first time it was introduced. In fact, the first time EVM was introduced was in Parur Assembly Constituency in Kerala in 1982. People actually voted over EVM there in few polling booths. Based on this experience, Election Commission formed one TEC, Technical Experts Committee. This actually came from the recommendations of Dinesh Goswami's committee. And this Technical Expert Committee was created under the chairmanship of Dr. S. Sampar. He was director of IIT Kanpur when I was a student, but at that point in time when TEC was formed, he was chairman of RAC. Uh, of DRDO. Other than him, there were a few more people. Dr. Indireshan, who was professor of IIT Delhi, and Dr. K.C. Rao from ACIL. They looked at all aspects of EVM, functional aspects, practical aspects, electronics aspect, the thing whether it can run on battery or power and this and that, all that kind of things. And in 1990, they gave a report saying that the present EVM can be used in the elections. These were the EVMs of what is known as M1 category, Mark 1 or uh, first category. EVM, as many of you know at that point in time, had only two units. One is known as control unit, the other one is known as ballot unit. This configuration remained for a long time. Control unit was the one on which the presiding officer would press a ballot button so that machine gets enabled and the voter can go and press one of the candidates choice on the ballot unit in a slightly enclosed compartment so that whom he is voting is not known. It's a very important thing that voter confidentiality or rather not voter confidentiality, vote, voter association confidentiality is maintained. There are three different things that we will talk of. One is the voter confidentiality, who voted. The second is vote confidentiality, to whom it was voted. And the third one is vote voter association confidentiality. In Indian system, vote is confidential till the day of counting. You would not know who has gotten how many votes. And vote voter association confidentiality remains forever. It can only be revealed by a court order. It has been several uh, several voters have made uh, complaints saying that their vote was not registered. They voted for so and so and this and that. And judges have actually seen this in private chambers and have certified that the machine has not given, has not registered a wrong vote. So this has happened several times. Um, after 1990, this committee was reconstituted as Dr. Qureshi talked about, and this became a permanent committee of election commission, technical expert committee on EVM. Uh, Dr. Indireshan, he became the chairman. He was, as I said, director, I uh, mean, professor of IIT Delhi and also director of IIT Madras. Um, Professor Indreshan became the chairman. Dr. D.T. Sahani from IIT Delhi and Dr. A.K. Agrawala from IIT Delhi were the members. This committee made a recommendation for the newer design of EVM. So when we looked at the EVMs, first set of EVMs which is 1989 wanted, which is M1, actually had been a major workhorse for Indian elections. Second set of machine which came out in 2006 was a slightly
better machine, much better algorithms, much better protocols were used, much more friendly. But I think what remained constant in all these machines is 12 second delay between two voters. And what was that for? It, in our technical jargon, we call it rate control. Whenever there is a problem, whenever you have, you have issues of the resources, for example, on the uh, GSM network, telephone network or whatever, whenever you have a problem, you, where you are not able to meet the peak demand, but you are able to meet the average demand, you resort to a method called rate control, which means beyond this you cannot vote or beyond this you cannot use the resources. This rate control turned out to be a major saver for Indian elections. Why? Because of the rate control, booth capturing and ballot stuffing just suddenly disappeared. It was not feasible for somebody to put multiple votes at the same time because in a, in a minute you can only put maximum of five votes and a police normally when such kind of disturbances happen during the election would be there on the polling booth in less than five minutes. So effectively it was not meaningful for any gunda or any person to actually go and start doing a booth of ballot stuffing in any polling booth. But what is the major thing that came about in M2? M2 machines brought in some very, very innovative thing. First thing was that it used for the first time an encryption. So there was a challenge. Somebody said, what happens if I put a device on the wire and therefore I change the vote because it is a, if I what is a EVM? EVM is basically an electronic calculator. It registers all the switches. It doesn't know who the candidate is. By the way, no machine can ever know this. So it registers the switch and it says switch number 1, switch number 2, switch number 3, all the way up to switch number 16. It registers along with date and time stamp. What was happening in M1 machines where all these switches were taken as it is on a very thick wire to the control unit and the control unit registers all the switches along with time stamp. So now, there is a, every polling booth maintains a voter register and therefore you can correlate and say at 9.45 who voted and you can actually look at at 9.45 whom this vote was cast and therefore you can correlate. But this is not trivial and therefore this information is typically not available. But this is a possibility under the court law, vote, voter association confidentiality can be broken, can be compromised because the court said so. Now, having said that, M2 machines actually started looking at better wiring structure, better protocol because people said, if I swap the wire, there's a big thin black wire which is going and if I swap two wires from here to there, Let's say switch number 3 and switch number 4 gets swapped. I press on switch number 3 and what recorded is for switch number 4. This was an allegation. This was a possibility, at least theoretical. And in order to handle this, Election Commission introduced what is known as mock poll, what is known as FLC, first level check, and what is known as transparency of the wire. So wire was in full public display right from CU to VU. So you can see that there is no such thing which is actually swept. And <coughs> during the mock poll, one could say, because if any time the wire is swept, you press button number 3, it will register for button number 4 and you will see that your results are not matching. And therefore you can question, you can look at, problems can be identified, problems can be worked upon. However, in M2, even this possibility was gone. Why? Because M2 brought in what is known as packet switch network. And because of this packet switch network, the information which goes from one end to other end is encoded in certain ways so that it is not available to anybody to look at. It doesn't carry the signal as on per switch basis, but it carries the data in terms of 
which key has been pressed and this data is encrypted. So it becomes a data network rather than a signal network and that was a major thing. The second thing that was introduced in 2006 EVM was some kind of authentication. The corresponding vendors, two of them, ECIL and BEL, who had been always making this, one is an atomic energy uh, PSU, the other one is defense PSU, and they have been always manufacturing this, so it was actually seen that this uh, uh, EVM actually would have certain kind of authentication so that the manufacturers can very quickly and easily identify and say this machine is not changed at all. This is the FLC procedure. They look at the machine, they verify that is there any change and if there is no change, machine has not been uh, modified in whichever way, then there is a mock poll which is done and some machines randomly are used for as high as 1200 volts to make sure that they are like polling booth situations. And the results are tally. Results are declared, results are tally. Yeah. So I'm just coming to now the third version. The third version, which is M3, its need came about in 2014 elections. Why? Because the machines which are of 1989 wanted, the machines started failing. Electronics, as you know, have certain life. Election Commission decided you know, after discussion with various experts, including us, saying 15 years is a lifespan that one would expect. And the machines, components were not available, machines could not be vandalized, could not be... So therefore, these were the problems. So in 19... Uh, in 2013, new machine model M3 was introduced. M2 and M3 machines are the only machines which are compatible to VBPAT. VBPAT um, is a very interesting history. In 2011, I was, I was introduced to election commission in 2010. In 2011, first trials of VVPAT were done in four different locations. Five different locations, that's right. Five different locations. Uh, 2012, the second round was done. We learned from the first round. First round had two kinds of printers, open printer and a closed printer. The counts never tally because people did not put the slips back into the box. So counts never tallied. In 2012, we found counts still did not tally. But then each count there was a mismatch. We could actually correlate it to the machine non-functional. Current EV pads are very, very sophisticated machine. In fact, people tell me, what is an EV pad? It's a thermal printer. Every parking lot somebody gives you a receipt. Every point of sale device gives you a receipt. So what is there in this? It is actually a remarkable piece. Why? Because of a number of reasons. The print produced by this will not fade away for five years. You can try with any slip that you actually get from and keep it for more than one week. You will not be able to read it yourself. The second, it is a, it is a capsulated, encapsulated device. Nothing can come in, nothing can go out. That means it should work independently. It actually has variety of different sensors. Sensors which were introduced, developed by our manufacturers and us together. It actually measures the length of the VV pad slip. If it is more than 99 mm or less than 99 mm, there is a problem. It measures the quality of the print. If there is a contrast issue, there is a problem. It measures you know, is there a roll depleting and all that? If after the printing, the slip is cut and it has not fallen into the box below, in the sealed box below, there is a problem. And all of these problems are reported immediately to the presiding officer. M3 machines also <coughs> follow the same thing, except that M3 machines, in fact, in M2 machines, a um, lot of, in 2009 elections, lot of controversies that came, people said that there are machines which can be tempered and this thing has happened, that thing has happened, what we expected, our results were not on expectations. I think our Indian electorate is very, very smart. It knows how to beat the expectations of candidates. Okay. Why? Because they are all clear about one thing. If they don't meet the expectation and if it is not known in the beginning, 
then they will be instrument of harassment. People are known to say that this particular locality did not vote for me, therefore no development for that. And therefore, people actually want to hide whom they voted. As a society, as a, as a community, as a locality, and voters are very, very smart. So, if that is the case, then how do you actually say that EVM is accurate or not? In fact, I remember Professor Indration actually saying once that our VV pattern, in fact, all of us are very, very convinced that EVMs cannot be tempered. But I'll just give you a few reasons for that. Professor uh, Indration said our VV pads are like Sita. After one was, nobody trusted that Sita was pure lady. Even Sita was asked by Bhagwan Ram to go out of his house. So he said, this is what it is. This statement of his was not liked by many, many people. You know, he said, what are you talking of? This is Sita on one side and the EVMs on the other side. We know that EVMs can be tampered. Any electronics can be tampered. Yes, yeah, sure, any electronics can be tampered. In fact, there have been cases where people talk about this and I will actually say a few things where people said this. Uh, so first thing, people say that EVMs can be tempered in the following way. There is a software which can be tempered. There is a hardware which can be tempered. There is a process which can be tempered. And a lot of people have actually talked about it. And these people have come from variety of different segments, from political parties, from bureaucracy, from individuals. And I must tell you, some of these names that I talked about in the beginning who gave the proposals and when their proposals were not taken by election commission, by doing a due evaluation, they became very, very critical of EVM. Till now, they have been at many forums saying EVMs are bad devices. They themselves were the, you know, uh, and that's I think partly to be blamed. The technical society in general says, I am the best, everybody else is inferior. It's not that they are doing it with a malicious attention, but it is because we believe in our own solutions much more than anybody else's solution. So, the, the logic that is given by people, number one, Google search gives you 22,400 results on how to hack EVM, and therefore EVMs are hackable. Now, this is a hilarious statement. Why? Because Google says there are so many uh, so many ways you can hack the EVM. Google has not shown even a single way of hacking the EVM. Google is just a search engine. Anytime somebody said a large bulk of it comes from this country saying EVMs are hackable, it will actually show that as a statement. 22,400 pages coming saying EVMs can be hacked. I'm sure about 15,000 of this would be from this country, from various newspapers, okay? So therefore, that doesn't really mean anything. Another statement. Uh, software code in the EVM has remained unchanged for years, okay? Whereas code is changed every day in casinos. How can that be? I'm sure casinos and EVMs actually solve a different problem. While in casinos, you need a software to be able to temper in EVM, you don't need a, you can't create a software that can be tempered, especially when it cannot be changed. So, in the next next statement, the most secure place on this earth, Pentagon, even their machines have been hacked. So, does it mean that our machines can be hacked? I have a calculator in my house. Because the machines can be hacked and therefore my calculator gives a wrong statement, does anybody say that? Has anybody seen a calculator that they bought from Casio or Sharp or whatever, Orpet or whatever and giving a wrong calculation? Just because electronics can be hacked doesn't mean that this electronics will be hacked. And that's the big point that has to be noted. And why? Because your calculators cannot be on the internet. Your calculators cannot be on the network. Pentagon computers, those which are not on the network are never hacked. Pentagon computers which are on the network of course, there will be attempts from people to hack it because they can reach up to that. So, if reachability is not there, how can hacking be there? 
The results of 2009 General Assembly election, general elections were contrary to all predictions in opinion poll and exit polls. And therefore machines were hackable. I have not seen two opinion polls matching, two exit polls matching, exit poll matching with opinion poll, at least I have not seen this, some of them might have. And therefore I can say every poll is hacked and something which is probably not hacked is the EVM. Victory margin in 2009 General elections were very, very small and therefore machines must be hacked. Now, how does the victory margin being low results in hacking? I don't understand this. During 2009 election, electronic fixers approached all political parties. A lot of talks actually went around to the, to the party saying we can hack. Nothing was possible. Now, I'll actually give you a small uh, reason behind this. If suppose machines were hackable, you know, we in, in uh, mathematics, we actually have a proof by contradiction where we say, assume you are right. Assume that the machines can be hacked. If the machines can be hacked, then how do we handle this? So assume that the machine can be hacked and now show that machines are not hackable. So how do you do this? Assume that the machine is hacked. In order to hack this machine, somebody has go close to the ballot box during the day of the election. And because somebody has to go on there, there will be an ink mark on that. Therefore, that person cannot go to another polling booth. And in a typical constituency, there would be about 2,000, 3,000, 4,000 polling booths. That means we must have at least 50% of that have 3 to 4,000, not 3 to 4,000, 2,000 people who actually knows how to hack the machine, how to hack the system. And in a constituency, you know, in, uh, we are talking of thousands of constituencies. We are looking for something close to about a million people knowing per party basis how to hack. In India, people having a secret of whether the husband fought with the wife in the next door or not is such a such a open secret. Keeping a secret which is known to six or seven or ten million people especially when they keep changing party from one to another, I think it is impossible. Especially in the context when election commission has given them opportunities to come and show and not even a single person has been able to show that. Why is it has happened? Okay, there are other things that people have talked about. And these are again some very interesting things. EVMs have been banned in other countries and therefore why are we using it? Now this is I think another very very interesting question that people ask. In other countries, how many of such countries actually had, you know, uh, vote stuffing? Where was the law and order situation problem? There were very different kind of voting. What problem are they solving and what problem are we solving? We are solving the, sol uh, we are solving the problem of malpractices. They are solving the problem of efficiency in their system. Two things are different problems. If you are looking at that, Professor, Mr. Devasaham has warned me that you have to give him equal time. <laughs> <laughs> I will I will just take one more minute and then stop at this. So, so therefore, all I'm saying is that because other countries it have been banned, it doesn't mean that our products are bad. The NetApp company, which is normally quoted, is banned in Europe. It is banned not because they were bad machines or good machines. It was banned because there was no law supporting EVM in those countries and therefore Supreme Court said you cannot use EVM. It has nothing to do with the quality of the EVM. Another, another point that sometimes people say that now introduction of VVPAD has made things better. Of course it probably might have, things, might have made things better. But one question that people always talk about is that Supreme Court directed, and I want to use this word, directed the election commission to use VVPAD. Nothing can be far from truth. Why? Because VVPADs were used in 2011 as a trial, 2012 as a trial, in 2013 on 4th of September in Noxon Assembly constituency, first time VVPAD was used in Nagaland. The results were made available to the, uh, I mean, the findings were made available and affidavit was filed by the election commission saying they are considering 
introduction of VVPAT in a timely manner. And Supreme Court said if the if the uh, respondent as well as the claimant both are actually saying, both are agreeing that VVPAT should be used, therefore it should be used, where are we? They did not direct anybody. Only thing that election commission said, provided the budget is available, we would introduce it. And in the Supreme Court judgment, if you read, Supreme Court has said the government, the central government is directed to make funds available to election commission to introduce this. It has never said that election commission is directed. It was actually said by election commission we want to introduce. And I remember this very, very distinctly. Um, having said this, uh, there are several anecdotes which are available just for the shortage of time. But election commission time and again has shown that machines are not hacked, has given challenges. People have talked about that they can break machines and all that, but not even once anybody has been able to show that machines are hackable. In fact, I will just quote one incident of June 2017 when this challenge was announced to the current, uh, you know, uh, controversy. I remember Dr. JD uh, talked about this uh, and said that we all, and I just quote his words, he said we all belong to the same stakeholding business of democracy. Indian democracy, we are all equal stakeholders. It is not that I want to challenge you, you want to challenge us. Both of us are working towards making system more efficient, more transparent and better. If you can show anything which is bad, we will work upon this and improve upon this. I don't want to call it a challenge because it looks like that there is a fight between the two of us. We both are working towards that system. And I think this was the most sensible thing that one can say. And it was actually said, and not even a single person actually came and said that, you know, this was a problem. So with this, thank you very much. I think I've been able to say what I wanted to say. Um, and, um, you know, I would be available for questions. Thank you. They are making the best device under the sun. Otherwise, are they democracy? See, we have been involved in this exercise for a long time. The government has conducted elections, we have been a member of the government, 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 we have been a member of the now, where is democracy? There is money, there is machine in the election, but where is democracy? That's the question I'm going to ask. You see, the election is synonymous with democracy. So there was a, excuse me, you're standing on the edge with fork. Democracy, all along with you. Okay, now. <coughs> Elections are synonymous democracy. It's democracy exercise. After the end of the parade, final one, these years may be devices of technology excellence, but do they comply with democracy principles? This debate does not come into the public domain at all so far. Everyone is talking about you have this game is good, that game is good, this is this is not network, this is not network. I am not talking about technology, I am not talking about technology at all. But have they ever talked about democracy principles? What are the democracy principles? Next question. Yeah, please. Yeah, please. Now, there are four democracy principles. Elections are meant for that. Elections are not meant to establish whether this technology is good or this machine is good or that machine is good. Number one principle of democracy is in view of the public rationale of elections, the process should be transparent in a manner that the general public can be satisfied then what is correctly recorded and counted. Is this happening? Big question mark. It is being recorded. I'll come to the next slide. Is it being recorded? I don't know. Maybe. Is it being counted? No. I don't know. Because everything is done electronically. I do not know what is happening in place. Six. All essential steps in the election should be subject to public scrutiny examinability. One is, number one is, satisfaction of the public. 
It can be examinability. I'll tell you, some of the youngsters, many times they voted for the paper ballot system. When you vote for the paper ballot system, when you go in, after the polling officer fixes the thing, it gives you the ballot system. The, the candidates are listed there, simple list is there. You have a first look at it. Yes. Yeah. My candidate is there. Why? Simple list. Go into the booth. Again, you are looking at it. Second exam is there. My candidate is there. My booth is there. My candidate is there. Is there. Again, you are taking the little tab and put it on the symbol. Before folding it, again you are seeing three times you are examining whether your candidate was there on the ballot paper, whether you have voted for it correctly, then you fold it and go. Similarly, during the topic, they also discover in front of everybody, all the representatives sit there and it's all open. Now what happens? I go there, only the officer presses a button, you sound comes, I press a button, you sound comes. God alone knows what happens. God, I know that God alone knows. So I am not talking about the machine at all. So examinability and satisfaction of the of the voter is absolutely absent in the current election. Ordinary citizens should be able to check the essential steps in the election process without special expert knowledge. Only an expert, a computer expert, can know what is happening inside. Like Professor Mola, he knows it. I don't know. Even I don't know, sir. <laughs> no, the thing is that that's all. There should be transparency in the counting of votes, ascertainment of the results reliably without special knowledge. These are the basic democracy principles for any voting system to comply with. Now, let us see. Thank you. What are the voting systems? <coughs> there are five systems in the, world, in the world. First is the paper ballot. Vote is recorded on paper and counted by hand. Please, emphasis is very important. Recorded on paper, counted by hand. Second, Direct recording media, voter recording memory, counter electronically. In memory, some memory, machine memory, and electronically counted. I, I have nothing to do with that. Third is the one now latest. Direct recording media, which is water verified paper on it. Vote is recorded in memory and printed on paper, counting then electronically and by hand. Facilitating verification of the before declaring the result. This is what we are trying to achieve now. I will come to that in detail a little later. Then the other two are not applicable to us. So India abandoned number one paper ballot. Now it uh, adopted two, and now in the process of implementing three. Out of these, only ballot paper fully conforms to democracy principles. I have conducted elections with ballot paper. What Professor Mora said is right. Booth capture does take place, but now booth capture is out of question. Please don't compare panchayat elections or very parliament elections. Booth capture is absolutely impossible. The election commission has made arrangements for the government. Booth capture is absolutely impossible. Now I don't want to go into the operation of the Next please. Now, argument electronic voting machine. The election commission has been arguing in favor. Most of the arguments are arguing. Yes, of course, the Mona has said, so I will skip this. Next. Thank you. Judicial proof. I think I would like to make a small correction to what Professor Mona said. German Supreme Court, the same issue went to 2009. They did not throw it out. Anything about mechanical part of India. They asked these four questions which I told you earlier. Does this comply with these democracy principles? They could not respond positively, so they said it is unconstitutional. Nothing to do with the mission. German Supreme Court decision is purely on the basis of democracy principles. Please read it in Southern Republic. Then come to Dr. Subramanian Swami's case. In January 2012, Delhi High Court expressed reservation on India with this ruling, that court even the ruling itself. Dr. Swami is right to the extent that it cannot be ruled out that Indians may be vulnerable to pass Delhi High Court. There may be security issues as well. Now, around that time, the Supervisor was the Chief Election Commissioner. The Election Commission was seized of the matter. As Professor Rona said, they were already working on the PD Pact. So, when the summons came from the Supreme Court, Election Commission presented the PD Pact on 
And then from that, this is the order Supreme Court has taken with the order itself. It says this is what they, the order should do. We are satisfied that the paper trail is an indispensable requirement of free and fair election. The confidence of the voters in the EVM can be achieved only with the introduction of the paper trail. EVM with the file system ensures the accuracy of the voting system. We intend to have fullest transparency in the system and to restore the confidence of the voters. It is necessary to set up EVMs with the VV file system because vote is nothing but an expression which has immense importance in the voting system. Supreme Court gave the direction. They did not ask them to produce EV file. Supreme Court direction is implemented throughout the country. That was the direction given to the Supreme Court. Next. What is this water well paper? I think President Professor Mona also said, I'll just run through that because that's important for our later discussion. UV fan is an independent system attached to the EVM that allows the voter to verify their vote, their vote card as intended. When the vote is cast, the elector shall be able to view through the transparent window of the UV fan the printed paper slip showing the serial number, name, and symbol of the candidate of the fan. The slip remains exposed to the window for seven seconds. After which it automatically gets cut and falls into the sealed off box. You can't carry it in your pocket. Since 2013, VVFs are being used in selected constituencies, selected constituencies every day and parliamentary elections. In 2009, the National Commission has already announced that it will be used pan India in all constituencies. Now, what happens? They are introducing VVF, but the rules about counting complaint remain archaic as ever. 1961. Rule 14 A, the public health rules takes care of complaints of wrong printing by the impact. They take a written declaration from the voter and record the test vote and say clumsy mechanism. That takes place inside the polling booth, which is not available to the If found to be true, they will stop the poll or they will make an investigation inquiry. That's not what the market is for. Counting was according to Rule 56D, said after announcement of the result, the candidate is the agent may apply in writing to the RO for counting other people, and RO may take a decision in writing. You know, same archaic system of complaint and cross verification procedure, which doesn't fit into a modern voting system. Next please. What does the election commission have done? That is where now my real history starts. The election Commission has not bothered to look into this democracy principle at all. They have not looked at VVPAT as an instrument of democracy principles. They have considered it as if we are an additional nuisance. Counting of paper slips is only on one polling station in each assembly constituency randomly selected by the law of law, 13 to 2018, direction of draft. One polling booth in the entire assembly constituency of about three, four, five hundred groups. So five, 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 four person only will be done. It will be done after the completion of the last count of the county votes record being on to the last. Just a sort of, you know, kind of symbolic kind of exercise. Well, detailed guidelines <coughs> even for draft law. There are none on the verification of the paper count with the remote card. This defeats the very purpose of installing the back in all mediums, which would be rendered negatively and amount to non implementation of case law. This means that ECA has dealt with the crucial task of verifiability and auditability of every remote card. That's a mandate. Which is the rise and nature of introducing the GB back in very character. The main purpose behind the ECA is violating the market's principle. Oh. The main purpose behind the introduction of the is to bring in accuracy, variability, and transparency in the cost of the vote. With the presence of the VPAT, voters can verify if their vote has been correctly recorded. Yes, that is given. There is doubt there also. In seven seconds, I don't think an article for the vote will take up. But that we give that. We are not arguing that. Only when the paper slips are verified by the voters are counted. You are verifying something, you are counting something else. What we are verifying should be counted. Only when the paper slips as verified by the voters are counted, when the true purpose behind the production of new is served, and some centers of democracy principles are adhered to. 
without turning into bad papers, which is a significant percentage of all patients, these assembly terms can say that they could have verified with the transparency in the development process to remain unrealized. And then we have read that slip in just one polling station for assembly transparency, also to buy 0.4 to 0.5 percent of the year is nothing but an exercise in large transparency. Imperative. Now again, given this 0 0.05 percent, what we do? The sample size of one polling station is statistically unsound. And more than that, see the second paragraph. See, all, all, of, all of us have voted in the election. Each polling booth has got different kind of categories. So many different kinds of polling booths are there. You really want to have sample, you must have sample from each of these categories. Which are these categories? The imperative need for stratified sampling is a random sample of one or more polling stations drawn from each of these following strata. Urban, middle upper class, urban, poor slum, semi-urban, rural, then minorities, remote, hilly desert, poor area, those with very heavy water turnout, 80% above, moderate, 50 to 80. So there are so many categories. You have to draw boots from there. You have to draw and then count them. So because of that, next please. Now, this is what they are recommending. At least, though I am of the view, Electronic voting machine does not, does not conform to any of the democracy principles. We can use a feeble opportunity, provided as it is, EVM do not comply with any democracy principle. We pass or a feeble attempt to comply with the principle of electricity with abysmally low sample of size 0.5% so the recommendation is. It is imperative that we passes must be simultaneously hand counted for a sample size of at least 25% of the polling stations in the assembly community. With the sample drawn randomly to the different strata and verified with the electronic copy. Start with the new method. If any variation is found, then the entire new patch slips in the country should be counted and tally with the electronic count before declaring the result. After declaring the result, is absolutely useless. Moment of the declare everything is over. Go to the High Court, Supreme Court, it takes 10 years, 15 years, and you become an MLA, you become a minister, you become a prime minister, and you are there also. So it's meaningless exercise, anything be done after the election of Anything should be done only before the election of That is a very, very important part we would like to give to the election of This is a direction that can be issued to EC immediately enough to ensure the integrity of the election of The beauty of this is, <coughs> for this election commission, they don't have to go anywhere. They don't have to go to the government, they don't have to go to the parliament. It is exclusively the authority of the election commission mandated with the constitutional Next. Reliability of EVM. Now, recently there is a lot of uh, complaints. Since I am not a technical man, but I have just read out. That's why I have read all over this, and this is for the mother trying to. Uh, sort of a counter this, but then I just read it out. Last scale reports a failure in manufacturing of Indians. Only patchy steps have been taken thus far by the, uh, to allay these concerns because EC is obsessed with the inside of the Indians. For far from chief election collector, uh, they are not there. It told me Indians are infallible. Infallible. I mean, your God is not infallible. Of course, they can work with him infallible. ECA has dedicated crucial electoral processes, manufacturing, hardware, software, checking, and maintenance equipment to countries, agencies, including foreign entities. No means to verify if they are playing fair or fault. None of them are under the control of the electoral committee. We have faith in the electoral committee. This is a constitutional party. But we have no faith in ECA and ECA. They are just ordinary public sector under the ministries. And two companies are outside the country manufacturing the chips. No control. It's all also. They have no control at all. Only the technical company is doing some kind of control. Spate of UEP manufacturing, yes, we saw that. In a recent by election. And high manufacturing, because UEP is still, I think, today there was a report saying that the paper is faulty, paper is smudgy, and because of the paper is created problem, they want to change the paper, the printing paper. That was reported as early now. Reasons must be used for the first time before you start. Devices sensitive to HDV, placed under direct light, possibly in sandwich. Now, this is what they, today I saw that they have to change the paper. 
So these are the recent events. So you can agree that they are not about complaint or manufacturing. They are manufacturing. That's the point. Rod and tampering. I just run through. I am not emphasizing it. But the fact is, there is scope for insurance fraud at three stages. There is so much of fraud can take with the, with the banks who have so much of security system. I don't think the same thing can happen here because of these reasons. Not because of the election comes in India. It's because manufacturing state, we see here, have to work in Bangalore, outside, local code. District level, when the EVMs are stored in the archive, go down. This can take place, outside. During the first level checks before election, when authorized technicians from DCL, DCL service, EVM, most of them are from private companies. They are also on our source, Chinese companies. They have no control, part of those, most kind of uh, sort of history they have. So, recently there was a right to information. Reply, response, so huge variation between EVMs received by the electricity in India and those supplied by DCL and DCL. I am not going to detail, this detailed report is available. Huge variation. Then, no explanation what happened, no circumstances, where have they gone? And even, this is not report, 70 cases of theft of EVMs, statistical, with an RBMP, no conviction so far, and no explanation where this case went. So, four arguments, no, this is, for the technical, grammar, technical man, and but I have mentioned this because Professor Mona repeated it again and again. The core argument of ECA, EC EVM is standalone, not transfer. Widely distributed and therefore cannot be transferred with that is repudiated by the German IT exploit, Dr. Oldman Bishop, who won this case to the German Federal Court, and Alex Kalman, Professor of Computer Science, who was the President, who recently testified before the American Senate. They say there's no difference between that EVM and this EVM, and the same category as EVM. If they can be transferred, this house can be tampered. This is a technical question. I am not going to give this. The technical people here, they may be able to throw away all this. Next. Last slide. Conclusion. <coughs> EVMs are not about them. They can't make any votes. They don't comply with the development rules. There are flaws and failures below. There are enough and more reasons for EVMs to be cast aside and replayed with damaged papers. The scare that he said, those days, these days are <coughs> security system is different, what did it different, election conditions, control of uh, the elections are different. So that kind of, even then, I am not going to the damage at all. But since we have ele election commission introduced to keep the mandate, that is the AC, it should be given a fair chance to prove at least some complaints of democracy principles. This is possible only if the facts are laden, and large percentage of seats are held under and verified before the time Former CEC, Chief Election Commissioner, in a recent convention they had, they recommended all of the government that they must come and much larger number of seats. This is well within the powers of ECA and therefore immediately available, as you mentioned. ECA is, therefore, a couple of days ago, I had the statement by the present Election Commissioner, talking to who is ballot papers. He said, why are the people talking about ballot papers in this archive? Why are the people chasing election and voting issues? Because they have no voice. They have to be chasing election and voting issues. Now, he has completely ruled out the term to ballot papers. Okay. Is that it? Do they have any option except for the election and voting Both the mission must be 100%. There's no 0.1%, 0.5%. No, you have 5% level of law. It's a democracy. Everyone must have the right to express his vote. So it must be 100% made. Counting 25% of the members. Once choice is genuine democracy, at the point of the The ball is in the This representation. So, but in conclusion, what I would say is uh, elections are not for technology accidents. There's no technology competition in India. Especially with paper that is in India. This is for democracy. And India is compared to poor. Under the cover of the under the country, which has to be transparent. We must know what we are. The election is an exercise where a citizen who is a sovereign is transferring his sovereignty for five years to somebody. Let's understand the basic principles of democracy. People are sovereign. He is transferring his sovereignty for five years. I don't think for that he can depend on a mission. It must be examinable. 
and you must be satisfied fully. Thank you very much. Everybody talks of Germany banning without actually knowing what were the reasons for them to ban it, what were the ground. And that judgment clarified that German uh, Supreme Court did not find any fault with the technology. They, did, they had nothing, you know, coming. They, they, it was only a constitutional issue. The constitution required that the, the process should be transparent, visible to the people without an expert help. Which means when we press a uh, button, the vote goes into a machine, and we don't know whether it has whether it has gone to the right switch, or right destination or not. It's just a matter of faith. So that is the reason. And therefore, we have to understand before we quote that judgment. Secondly, I would like to clarify that in India we follow the Indian Supreme Court. And Indian Supreme Court, 25 years before the German Supreme Court had said the same thing, similar thing. They said that you cannot use Indian. We had done an election in Kerala, which was de uh, declared null and void because we had used the EVM and they said that your law does not mention EVM. It only talks of ballot papers. Introduce, uh, bring it into the law and it, uh, use it. Sure, and so that was the reason, therefore, we must know exactly what was said uh, where it become very important. Secondly, whether Supreme Court directed the election commission, Professor Mona rightly clarified, they done. In fact, he uh, also mentioned to you and as did Mr. Devasaham, 2011, I would know because I was the CEC then. And I was the one who took the decision that we will introduce BVPAT. We are the two factories to manufacture those machines. And when they were ready, we did not four but five tests. And it is important for me to mention <coughs> those places where these were tested to see all the climatic conditions. Kerala, coastal region. Jaisalmer, desert and heat. The Lada for uh, winter. Chirapuji, if you, if you please, for rain. And Delhi. And there was a lot of malfunction and we decided that they are not uh, ready to be used. Uh, and we decided to, to send it back to the factory. They came back by then, I retired. But, uh, and this, these machines were tested at the same five places a second time. And after they were, they were found fine, 2013, Mr. Zaidi was sitting and he would have uh, problem, you know, then it was decided to introduce them. Now, this becomes important because recently when the VP pass failed, uh, the election commission said that uh, it was because of the heat. I find it difficult to accept because we had tested them for heat. So what happened? And we actually, factories have to account for it. Because they had certified that they can stand and we did actually test them in Jaisalmer heat. So therefore, Kerala heat was not as much as Jaisalmer heat even last month. Therefore, that will leave the question. I don't know whether there is anybody from the media here. Are you writing or are you just here? <laughs> there is pakoda outside here. <laughs> <Nice pakoda. laughs> so, I have to be now more guarded. Madam Dashiki, that's, that's what I mean. So, so anyway, so, uh, I mean, please uh, do not say the thing which we uh, can create a uh, uh, wrong impression. Now, the, the um, one issue which neither of them has mentioned, which is the problem with EVM. Ever since we introduced EVM, the secrecy of the voting pattern of a village or a ward has been done away with. Earlier, we have, most uh, officers must have done election in their time. We used to draw samples, from, not samples, but 10 ballot boxes randomly. We used to put them in the drum, roll them, mix them, and then make bundles, so that you can never know what is the voting trend of a village. So that the village is not punished for the next five years by the party which uh, comes to power and is not happy. Now, ever since we introduced the machine, that secrecy has gone which has created a serious threat for uh, the, the voters. And we are on record, we have heard in the media, some minister in uh, Maharashtra, you did not vote for me, I will not give you water. You know, those kind of things are happening. We developed an electronic version of that, which is called totalizer. Same thing, uh, just as you mix in a barrel, barrel or, or, or you mix it in a machine. Now, that we made a silly mistake of referring it to the government of India. We should have just taken a decision and introduced it. Now, if you, I'm reminded of a, of a joke which we hear, is somebody who wanted to go on a one-way one street. He asked the constable, can I go on this? He said, no, you can't. Can't you see? They said, one way. So he said, but there are five other cars which, which have gone. He said, they have never asked me. <laughs>
So when if you ask them, you will never get the answer. If you just if you do, they could not have stopped you. Now 20 years we have been struggling for it, and now a parliamentary committee was set up, and the committee of politicians decided, no, 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 it will not be advisable. It will be wrong. City. Now they, 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 uh, this secrecy of water, which is paramount, is uh, being uh, violated and uh, nothing is happening. I think now the solution will only come from the court as most of the reforms have come through the Supreme Court. This is one reform uh, which will, uh, can also come uh, from them. Now, the one uh, question which uh, I have for you, the Professor Munga. Because there, there's a the question that I have been an official self-appointed spokesman uh, for the ECI, they don't speak, therefore I have to defend the machine. Now, uh, some of my journalists <coughs> called me uh, recently, he says he is doing an investigative story. And he asked me, question, Mr. Gurangi, you are a bureaucrat, tell me if the private secretary, to, and you say that the two factories are under defense ministry and the, electron, the atomic energy ministry, if a private secretary to defense minister calls up the BLCMD, that you know, Mr. CMD, there is a complaint against you, and then uh, how about a CBI inquiry? What will you do? You use a very uh, uh, dirty expression which I cannot repeat. Uh, well, actually, it's right. Therefore, what we have been saying in our defense that you know, the soft source code is developed by the top four engineers of these companies and uh, they are dependable and since this company is under defense ministry which makes secret equipment now have you gone into the source code have we what is the possibility if the cmd gets threatened or it is offered a thousand crores or five thousand crores which is chicken feed for the stakes involved in winning an election now can he actually think that and one tinkering which about which we must have an answer that suppose at that time a secret code is embedded. So say, let's just say five digit code, four digit will activate the, the code and the fifth digit is the destination button. Right, so uh, nine, four, five, three, four members, uh, four motors go in that, that order to activate. The fifth member says the destination button will be number seven. Now, machine will be innocent for five years, 10 years, 15 years, till you activate the code. Whether you have gone into the, that possibility, whether this has happened, this could happen, that needs to be answered. One more question which is still there, which needs to be looked into. Uh, this also was in the news six months ago that our claim has been that not only the technology security of the machine, that they are not temperable and all the things which Professor Mona mentioned, but also the custodial security. Which means from the factory to the polling booth, it is entirely controlled, it is, the, it is stored in lock and key, guarded by parameter force round the clock and 365 days. Now, therefore, it doesn't go into private hands. Arvind Kedirwal says, give me custody for 90 seconds and we don't. Now, in that context, when we hear, when we read, that these machines for at the first level check, were outsourced to a company which was belonged to uh, which was from Gujarat and where even a Bali name was. 18 lakh machines have to be tested at the what is called the first level check before they are deployed. And what does this mean? This checking the machine have a, they have been lying in a store for six months, one year, five years maybe. We have to see whether they are functioning. We will be test, the testing of a battery, the wire, in everything. Whether 18 lakh machines can be tested by 5, 10, 20 engineers of these, uh, these two companies? They have, uh, do they have enough engineers? Or for those 2, 3 months when these machines are tested uh, under the FLC, they have and written an article somewhere and I think in Business Standard. And they sent me a reply that uh, yes, they we guarantee that they are all in-house. Uh, the all in-house engineers do the testing. And uh, actually, they have made that also randomized that engineers do not know where they will go, they will be allotted random, randomly. It can be uh, seen, uh, can be checked by in house engineers whether they have enough engineers. So, in the Defense of Election Commission, I would say that if whenever the machine is taken out, even for a day, for a, for a minute from the strong room, we write to all the political parties that today we are going to open the strong room. For whatever reason, a machine has to be taken out to produce to be produced before the court or whatever reason. Please come and watch. They come and watch. When the machines are being tested for first level check or second or third or at every level, they are always invited to come and participate and they stand and they certify that the check was done in front of them. 
Yeah, 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 yeah